Hi guys, it's Chelsea from Smoldering Serpents again. So I have another feeding video for you today. There was a couple due up that haven't been in a video yet. So we'll see if, uh, if they want to be on camera or not. Um, a couple updates as well. We are starting our second reptile room. Uh, well, we have started. We finished the new floor and um, we cut all of the wood we need for the first seven cages. So we are well underway, actually. Um, so I'll be making some how-to videos for some of the building. I don't quite have the energy to do a full tutorial on a cage right now, but I will be doing some some shorter videos like the shelves. I get asked about the shelves um, in our cages a lot, so I'll do a short video on how I make those. Um, so for now, we have to move everyone, including our temporary tubs, out of that second room. So in this room right now, they're kind of wherever they fit. We have our two younger neotropical bird-eating snakes in those tubs, and we have our one snake who's probably in the most need of an upgrade, but she is doing fine in this as well. This is Safira, our green bush rat snake. She will be going into a permanent cage. As soon as it's done, it'll be one of the first ones in this new room. So that'll be nice to get her out of there. Um, but anyways, so yeah, this is a feeding video. Um, there'll be dead animals again. Just a disclaimer. We have mostly birds today, but a couple rodents as well. So we'll just jump right into it. Okay, first up is Nova. She's our two-year-old black milk snake. And she's behind those leaves. I think I can get her to come out. Here she goes. <laughs> That's her favorite spot there. She's pulling it back into her lair. <laughs> Okay, Auri is always a fun one to feed. She's a little nuts. Um, I actually like to let her sniff it and hunt it down herself. So we'll put it right there and see what she thinks. And hopefully she doesn't come flying out of her cage. Okay, she smells it. I know tong feeding, <laughs> if you can hear her tail vibrating, oh, you can see it there. She actually gets so excited about food, she'll rattle her tail like crazy. So close. <laughs> this is definitely one of the reasons why I always describe Aur as very goofy. She kind of loses her mind when she smells food. She's got it. <laughs> but yeah, she rattles her tail when she gets excited about food and uh, kind of races around her cage trying to find it. Um, I was going to say that tongue feeding is a lot of fun and it is fun to feed her off tongs too. When she coils food, she coils it like eight times, almost her whole body in a perfect coil. So that's fun to see too, but I really like watching them hunt it down. Okay, well, I had to put the camera down to get Tempest's door open and get her first um, piece of food in the door before she came flying out at me. So, um, she's got the first chick almost down and the second one is behind her. Um, so, 
She's getting two day-old chicks today for a meal. It's not very big. Um, there goes the first one. Yeah, so Tempest has long outgrown this cage. Um, but she's growing so fast that rather than building another intermediate cage for her, once we're done the first seven cages in the second reptile room, we're just going to jump straight to uh, building her adult 14-foot enclosure, which I'm very excited about, and it's also very necessary at this point. She's, um, she's definitely past four feet long, and she just passed a thousand grams. So at a year old, um, I usually find that colubrids have their growth spurts in their second year, which uh, means that we can expect a lot of growth out of her in the next 12 months. So we're going to do our best just to get her straight into that 14-foot cage. And then she'll have some room to move around because she likes to move. And uh, also makes things a lot easier when there's extra space um, at feeding time because I'll have room to open the door without worrying about her rushing to the front in about one second flat. So it'll be nice just for everyone to have some breathing room. And, uh, and then she can settle in and just get used to her permanent home rather than jump to another temporary one. <laughs> she does not want us watching her eat, apparently. Oh. Okay then. Now she does want us to watch her eat. <laughs> At the size she is now, I have no doubt she could eat a small rat. No problem, but first we try to keep her off rats um, and rodents in general. Um, we try to keep her on a more varied diet than just relying on rodents. But second, I really find that she much prefers a couple smaller prey items rather than one big one, which I've talked about before. But uh, these day-old chicks are a really great size at this point for her. She can get, she can eat bigger, but there's no point really. The most awkward part to these day-old chicks that I actually find um, snakes have more trouble swallowing than equivalently sized quail. Um, weak old quail are generally the same size as day-old chickens, but the quail are more slim in shape and the chickens have pretty wide hips. So snakes with smaller heads that aren't super stretchy, um, like Tempest, but she's a little more stretchy than uh, something like our black milk snakes or Honduran milk snakes. Both are large milk snakes um, you know, the adults are about a thousand to twelve hundred grams. They're big snakes, but they sometimes struggle with day old chicks. Um, so I'm glad that she can take them with ease because chicks are a really inexpensive way to add some variety to their diet. And, uh, and all the snakes really seem to love them. <laughs> okay. We will move on from this drama queen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's gonna come right up and check us out. Okay, hi. <laughs> okay, now we'll move on. Next up we have Annapelle, and she's over to the right there, sticking out behind the plant that she's dislodged. It's supposed to be farther up on the shelf there. She nearly got me when I was trying to give her fresh water, so I'm sure she's hungry. <laughs> yes, she is. 
So in general, Russian rats prefer smaller meals. So this is definitely the upper size that I would give her. Um, she doesn't really seem to have a preference, but sometimes when they're younger, they can prefer pretty small meals in proportion to their body. Generally, rat snakes, you know, they don't really care. They're really stretchy and they're really opportunistic. Whatever you give them, they'll take. But um, I've had a couple of people asking about picky Russian rat snakes lately. And uh, first of all, they can just go off feed during the summer if it gets too hot. Um, and it's not a big deal unless they're losing a significant amount of weight. It, um, it's not something to get super concerned about. They'll come back when it cools off a little bit. Um, of course, always check your husbandry, but it isn't that uncommon for them to take a break during the summer. But other than that, I always suggest trying smaller meals because especially our younger ones under like two, three years old, they generally prefer undersized meals more frequently. Okay, we'll let her <laughs> eat in peace. Next up is Luthien, and I have to climb up there yet on the ladder and open the door, but I wanted to videotape this in case she moved when I did that. So that plastic thing that I put up there was just kind of an experiment to see if I could make some kind of a hammock. It's not really a hide because it's obviously not enclosed, but I just wanted to see if I could make some kind of hammock that um, a semi-arboreal snake might use. And the answer is yes, I can, and yes, they will use it. Um, she's up there probably once every two days at least, usually every morning. So uh, <laughs> I've never fed her while she's up there, so I'm not sure how that's going to work, but I will climb up and get her door open. Okay, she did not move much. Um, I think I'll have her come over this direction for food. <laughs> Whoop. Well, okay. I know she'll figure it out. I was hoping she'd come right down onto the shelf, but she did not want to leave that hammock. Right now I can quickly give you a little look at how beautiful she is. She just shed this morning. The lighting's a little bit bright just because we're right up by the LED but she is a really pretty girl. <laughs> she will hopefully be a mom next year for the first time. Her and her boyfriend, Baron, are um, three years old this year, so next year is when we'll try them for the first time. And I'm very excited. These two snakes are so much fun. I don't really know if there's any possible link between morph and personality, but um, I will say that while these calicos can be intense, especially about food, they are super confident and really fun. They're so curious about everything. Um, and of course it might just be a you know gray rat, black rat type thing because they're also just in general really great snakes. Um, but the calicos in particular are a little bit different, I find. They're a little crazy about food, but also just fun in a kind of intense way. <laughs> Next up we have Humboldt, our eastern fox snake. And he's right there. <laughs> He is a hungry boy. <laughs> when temperatures get warm, he gets hungry. He's very cute. He 
These guys definitely have a higher metabolism than I was expecting. Um, he's full grown. I believe he's turning six this year. And uh, he needs probably close to twice the amount of food as some of our other North American rat snakes. So um, yeah, fox snakes, they burn through food pretty quick. Luckily, his appetite is kind of foolproof. So a chick like this every week or so, sometimes every 10 days, seems to work for him. All right, buddy, enjoy. Okay, next up is our ball python, Pepper. Try to get him to come out a bit. He's a really pretty boy. <laughs> yeah, you can see him a little. So that is just a weanling rat for Pepper, which is fairly small, but he got a little chunky, so we cut back on food. He's now eating a weanling rat every three weeks and still growing like a weed, um, but at a better rate, and his body condition looks much better. Um, I think in general, ball pythons are probably one of the most overfed snakes in the captive community. Um, Really, you hear a lot of people talking about like carpet pythons and boas and how infrequently they need to eat. But the reality is ball pythons really don't need to eat any more frequently than, than other really slow metabolism snakes. Um, like I said, Pepper's eating every three weeks now, um, alternating between a weanling or a day old chick. Uh, and once he moves back to small rats, he was up to small rats at one point and it was just too big. so. Uh, once he moves back to small rats, he'll be moved to four weeks. And it's not likely he's ever going to need more food than that, but on the off chance that he needs something bigger, it'll be spaced out even more, probably to six weeks. So um, not a lot of food, but it keeps him looking really lean and muscular and strong, um, not flabby like a lot of ball pythons. Um, we do like our snakes to be as healthy as they can be, so keeping extra weight off of them is the easiest way to do that. So I will let this pretty boy eat on his own. And I think we will be moving into the next room now. So this is another one of our grow out tubs. It is temporary. Um, I quickly set it up for our yearling male Russian rat, Kovaki. Um, he just went through a huge growth spurt and needed something temporary before we got his permanent cage made. So um, I don't know if I can get him out to eat. I don't even know where he is. Oh, there he is. Not the best video, I know, but I'm trying to hold the lid open while I feed him. Let's get you over here. He's at that size where he hasn't had quail too many times, um, so he really needs to think about it. You're gonna don't eat it from the butt first. That's not very smart. Birds are difficult like that. There you go. Look at that yellow chin. He's only a year old, so he is going to be. A ridiculously pretty boy. He's from Tim Spuckler, who has um, all around really nice snakes. 
and I've been really, really happy with Kobaki. He has a ridiculous appetite, and he's just been such a happy, healthy, beautiful boy. <laughs> He'll be um, for sure paired with our holdback female Tanara. And he'll possibly take Corel's place um, and just breed with Annapel as well. Not sure on that yet. Um, but for sure, he is Tanara's future partner. Okay, Nuwata, one of our female Baird's rats. Here she comes. <laughs> All right, good girl. She is the mother of this year's clutch of eggs, which are due to hatch in probably two weeks. And she's back to normal. She's fully recovered, gained her weight back, back to her usual outgoing self which is always nice to see. Here we have Taser, our two-year-old male Taiwan beauty snake. And if I can get him to see this. Okay, there he comes creeping over the leaves. <laughs> He's one of those snakes that just kind of launches his whole body at the food, which is nice because you get to see him without having to dig him out and pick him up. And oh boy, he is beautiful. He is just getting better and better. And he's a really nice snake too. I really think ta Taiwans are just underrated. I know the other beauty snakes have blues and I know it's pretty, but Taiwans are just, they are just stunning. And so much nicer than the other beauties. <laughs> and I say this as someone who loves our Vietnamese blue beauties. I do love them, but the Taiwans are just so much easier to deal with. Okay, speaking of Vietnamese blue beauties, we'll try to get Kalika um, our two-year-old female to come out so we can see her. I'll try it out, see if we can get her to come out. Sometimes she throws her body out so we can actually see her, and sometimes she does not. So, we'll catch her another time. She's actually out quite a bit in her cage, but um, there's just something about seeing her throw herself around food that's really impressive, but I'll get her one of these days. For now, at least we saw her head and her neck. <laughs> okay, that is the end of this feeding video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I always enjoy making these videos. Um, I have some ideas for some new content that I'll be putting out shortly. Some building tutorials as well as um, some profiles on individual snakes here as well as a couple species that I'll just talk about briefly. And, uh, <laughs> Luthien wants more food. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll see you guys, uh, for the next video.